What's going on everybody? The Network Berg here. Hope you've been doing well. It's a return to the Let's Lab. This this is the third episode. We'll be focusing on a few extra things, maybe looking at adding BGP and if we've got time, some MPLS as well on our provider network that we created the last time. So before I jump into the video, I just want to remind people to subscribe to the channel. It does help grow it as well as liking and sharing. I do appreciate it whenever you guys do that. Um, without further ado, let's let's slab this all right so like i mentioned in the intro we will be looking at setting up maybe some bgp uh before we start to do anything i just want to make sure do i still have internet from my devices my ce's because last time we spent some time and we created this little provider network which is running ospf and it's in area zero the backbone and we'll build in or build up from that as well and let's quickly check here nope that will never work all right that's good and that's good all right cool so we do have internet breakout from our sites from our customers so at least they they can still browse the internet get their emails all that fun stuff but we want to learn the routes more dynamically we want our network set up so that if i go to this micritic my provider edge and i log into it i just want to show you what i'm talking about because if you remember from this micritic i am redistributing all my connected and static routes to the rest of the ospf network so let's just quickly check here. Right, IP route print. And there we go. You see these AS, AS, AS. So if I look at my routing OSPF, and i go into my instance and i export this or i print it so these are the ospf configurations that's my router id and redistribute i'm redistributing connected and i'm redistributing my static as type one so it's just basically injecting those routes to the OSPF neighbors and these OSPF neighbors are then also just redistributing or, or advertising it throughout the network and that's why we've got breakout from those sites but I don't want to necessarily configure static routes every time I'm configuring a new site I just want to um, configure a routing protocol on that site which can then send that information to my OSPF neighbor or my PE dynamically every time i configure the site so that i don't need to have to set up static routes the whole time because it is a lot of admin work especially if you start getting into thousands and thousands of routes you're going to be keeping yourself more busy updating routing tables than just actually doing work which is very counterproductive so let's fix that by actually using a routing protocol you could use a various number of routing protocols you could even set up ospf on these networks on these routers and put them in a different um, area that that could be one way of doing it you could set up maybe rip um, if it's cisco you could set up eigrp um, but i personally like you to use bgp at the customer sites because it's very flexible and it allows us quite a bit of control on what we want to do with the routing so what we're going to do essentially is from our customer equipment we're going to set up bgp and then we will be learning our default route through BGP. So we won't have to statically configure it. And also we will be advertising our ranges, our interfaces, like our LAN ranges on the CEs to the PE using BGP. So that's going to be fun. All right. So let's start the process. Let's actually just log in to the PE. And they're all essentially going to use the same BGP neighbor. Not necessarily the same IP address, but it is going to be the same autonomous system 
uh, ASM that they're going to use to connect to. So let's quickly configure those details. Routing BGP instance and then also as OSPF there is a default instance. Well we can't see it like that but if we print it you'll see there is a default instance. You can't remove this. You can change the AS and the router ID. So I'm actually going to do that. I'll leave the default instance here. But this is also where you would configure a different instance that might be in a different VRF, um, which is essentially just a different routing table. But I'll explain that when we start doing those things. So let's add ourselves a different AS. So let's just set that AS routing BGP instance set. I'm going to make the AS something else. I'm going to maybe make it 6,500. 5000 sorry and then we will set our router ID and the router ID I'm going to make the same as the actual IP address of this router which was 4.4.4.4 that's the loopback address that's the same router ID that the OSPF is using now I don't want to redistribute any of these details yet and the nice thing is you're not going to do the default originate from here like with OSPF you're going to do this on a per peer basis which is quite nice routing BGP instance set all right that's all that I really want it's going to be for the default instance so that's the first number if you don't know why I typed that number there it's because it's the first number in the sequence when I printed it cool so we've got a BGP peer, um, instance now so it's basically we've just configured the autonomous system on the router. Now let's quickly configure a peer. So I might want to configure a peer to this first CE I was just on now. And I just want to see what is the WAN address. So 10.0.0.2 and 10.0.0.1 will be the PE. So let's quickly configure the BGP routing BGP peer. Add. we're going to add up here we're going to give it a name so I might call this to um, I'm gonna rename these things but let's call this peer to CE1 we'll call it CE1 and now I want us to also just type the remote AS and then I'm going to make 65 200 which I still need to configure I haven't configured it on the remote end yet but that's going to be the remote AS and then we will also specify the remote address and that will be 10.0.0.2 that's the WAN address of my CE so between the CE and the PE there's this link and they each have an IP address which we configured in the very first well not the very first on the on the second let's lab this so something to just take note of actually I think it might have been on the first but never mind okay so we've got our routing address remote address name and that is about all that we need to add for the peer um, i do want to add one more command and that is the default originate which basically tells the bgp to send out a default route you can always set it as always or you can set it as if installed so what if installed means is if there is a default route that exists in this routing table then advertise it if it's not there then don't tell the, the router how to get out with the default route uh, but it, it works well and it works badly um, I tend to use it on always because if I'm running an MPLS network and let's say the internet does drop but they still need access to the MPLS resources and they don't have routes specifically for that this will make sure that they can still get to the MPLS right cool so that should be fine now we're going to have a peer so if I do a routing BGP peer print we can see my peer is in the instant the default instance that's my remote address that's my remote AS if you type detail it, it also just makes it a bit um, neater like you can see all the options then and there is quite a bit of options you can set in BGP especially in and out filters which is really cool and allows you to do some really interesting stuff um, basically where you can deny certain prefixes or allow certain prefixes you're actually going to work a lot with filters 
the larger your network grows and the more routes you start getting exposed to. Okay, so we've got up here, let's configure it on the CE. And it's going to be exactly the same process, just in reverse. Quite a bit like how you configure an IPsec. So routing, BGP, instance, set. I'm going to set the router ID as the WAN address of this router, because that should be unique anyways. And I'm going to set the AS as 65200. Right, now I'm going to add my peer, routing BGP peer, add, and the name will be two, or peer to PE. Let's make that PE4. And we're going to set the remote AS, which was 6500, which is what we set on the other side of 65,000. I know why I keep messing that up. And then remote address which is 10.0.0.1 and that's it. Do we, do we set default originate here? No, please don't do that. I want to make it very clear and this is why it's also tricky for some people. That's why I tell, uh, I'll advise you to do this in a lab environment first. Don't just go ahead in production and start configuring BGP because you saw me do it on a video. Um, you might accidentally then do something like you put default originate on the CE and if you put a default originate on the CE, then you're going to inject a default route to your provider edge, to your core network. And you might run into some serious issues if you do that, especially if, if your routers are redistributing this new default route. Because what happens then is it'll get this default route from the CE and it will then start to advertise it to its peers. And then this will be the next hop. So all these other CEs will then try and break out through your router. So you're going to cause a massive issue if you do that. So please be careful when you do configure BGP, make sure if you do want to uh, set the default originate, it's only on the provider side, it's not on the CE. Unless there's some other trickery you're doing, we're, we're not setting default originate on the CE. So we leave it as is, and I'm going to hit enter. And now if I look here and I say IP or routing BGP peer and I print it, you'll see there's this E here. So this E means very good. <laughs> the E means established. It, it means the connection is up. The BGP peer has connected and they're busy exchanging routing information. So that's perfect. So if I now do an IP root print, there's my default route that I am learning from my PE. Awesome. So I don't need to statically configure default routes the whole time now. It's going to be done for me by my provider network. So I'm just going to remove this static route, IP route, IP route remove, and then zero. So there's just the BGP default route here. And if I ping out, it's still going to work and we're all happy. But let's say I remove this uh, default route to 192.168.10.0. So I've got this route, number 14. So I'm going to remove that IP route, remove 14. So if I ping out to the internet now with this address, is it going to fail? Yes. because now the PE doesn't know how to get back to the CE on the LAN address. The WAN address will still technically work, but not the LAN address. So let's advertise our LAN addresses network by adding that into the networks field. So that's quite easy to do as well. We just go routing BGP network, and then we can specify add, and then we're going to add a network. And our network will be 192.168.10.0 slash 24. You can synchronize it, but I'm not going to do that. We can just leave it like that. Actually, if I hit enter and I do the same ping again, it should work. And I'm not sure why it's not working. I think let's just quickly refresh the BGP so we can do what they call a reg routing. BGP peer 
we can refresh and this should be zero let me just see if i'm learning that address i am learning the address though i think this might be something else that's happening so that's not an issue oh <laughs> i know what's wrong so the reason it's not working is we've configured ospf and on this ospf router um, remember when we started the video i showed you that we're redistributing static and we're redistributing um, connected routes but let's look at that ospf again ip route or routing ospf instance print so yes i'm redistributing my connected i'm redistributing static routes but the route that I'm learning, it's a BGP route. So it's not redistributing this to the rest of the provider network. It's just learning the route and keeping it here. So to fix this, we can just set this OSPF instance to also redistribute BGP routes. So there you see this redistribute BGP It's currently set to no. We're going to change that to yes. So routing OSPF instance set redistribute BGP as type one, hit enter. Cool. Now, if I go back and I run my ping, it's up, it's working, it's running because now the other routers are learning the routes as OSPF. One quick question. Do you think if I go onto these routers, will they show as OSPF? or BGP routes for 192.168.10.0 slash 24. I'll give you some time to think while I actually log into the router. Okay. So IP route print. And there it is. And it's being learned as an OSPF route, which is expected, which is correct. It's not wrong. That is right. And I'm very happy with that. So now we are redistributing this BGP route we're learning on PE4 and let's say that's PE2 we redistrib and PE3 so PE2 and 3 we're redistributing both of them and we're we're basically making the route an OSPF route when we send it off to them now we've got internet breakout so that's pretty straightforward pretty darn straightforward actually so BGP not as hard as you thought huh <laughs> well it's, it, it gets a bit trickier when you start to work with the route filters and your network grows but and that is the essence of it we've we've configured a way to dynamically learn our primary route or our default route and we've also now set ways using the network command to advertise our routes back into the provider network cool all right so let's do the same for our other routers it's going to be pretty quick uh, on the other micritic it will basically be a copy paste just different uh, network address and this, when we get to the Cisco, that's what I want to show you. It's essentially the same. It's not difficult. All right. So routing BGP instance. Uh, I just want to check what the IP address is here. IP address print routing BGP peer set. No, not peer instance set. Router ID 100018 and then our AS65200. We can keep that the same. It doesn't need to change per site. Um, Cause it only, the communication only happens between the two neighbors. That's the nice thing about BGP. It's a, a me and you scenario. It's not like OSPF that's trying to say hello to everybody. It's saying hello to it's neighbor that you specify all right cool so routing bgp peer add name peer to pe4 remote address 10.0.0.17 remote as 65000 <laughs> and that is right I'm also going to specify my network. So routing BGP network, add network, 192.168.11.0 slash 24. 
and now I just need to configure my peer on my PE. Routing BGP peer add name equals peer to CE. Let's make that CE2. Remote address. Let's make that 10.0.0.18 and the remote AS 65.200 and default originate, yes. Routing BGP peer print. Both of them are established, so I'm actually pretty confident that everything's working. Routing, so I'm learning my route, IP route remove zero and then let's see can i ping out yes all right cool so we're done with this one just on my p let's see if i'm learning that route so i am learning the route but i still got the static route so let's just remove that as well ip route remove 15. cool so i'm learning those two routes Dynamically now, I still have two more routes I'm learning statically, which I don't want. All right, so let's jump onto the Cisco. And this again is why I love BGP and OSPF because they're industry standard. I can configure BGP on the Cisco towards the Micritic and it works 100% fine. It's gonna have the same settings, same type of values. The commands might look a little different how I, I add it, but it's doing the same thing. So let's jump into the router. IP show IP in brief show IP route. All right, so that's what I want to see. So that's my address. Okay. All right, let's configure this. So config T router bgp and then the next set is when you set what your as number is so if i question mark it it's going to tell you what is your autonomous system number so this is going to be 65 200 now i've got options as to well we've got our as already we're not going to redistribute anything so actually all that we can set here is our network and we're going to use 192.168.12.0 and then mask will be 255.255.255.0 okay that should be it show bgp sum it's not going to do anything yet well, you can also look at show ip protocols so there's the BGP we configured. There's nothing in it yet, but let's configure it on our PE. So routing BGP peer add name peer to CE3. All right, next we will be looking at remote AS 65200 and the remote address which was 10.0.0.10 oh, that's something I forgot to set the router ID but it's not that important um, it is but it's not because it, it will pick up a, like a default router ID default originate always so routing bgp peer print okay so this one's not coming up quite interesting config t router bgp 65 200 okay let's just check was i missing anything mm. we set our network so what we can set as well is mm, no, that should be fine. 
think they said anything else today. Shall I ping brief? Ping 10 zero zero 9. Oh, I'm being such a fool. Um, I haven't said my peer yet. I don't know why I would forget something like that because that is quite important. <laughs> Router BGP 65200. Alright, let's see where do we set up here BGP. Remote. Doo -doo -doo. I'm not going to use any of that. And this is just showing I don't consistently set up BGP on Cisco routers, but it shouldn't be too too different. Oh, there we go. We've got a neighbor command there, and we're going to use our neighbor's address as 10.0.0.9, and then the AS. Okay, we should actually have a remote AS neighbor. And then, where is our AS, AS value? Hmm, update, da da da. I mean, I, I typed remote AS, I didn't want to take it, that's fine. 6500, 5000, there we go. Alright, so, let's take another look. There we go. All right, so we're learning a default route. Let's check IP route print. Show IP route. Sorry, show IP route. All right, it's got the static route here, but the moment I remove it, it should show the BGP route. So let's do that. Config T. No IP route zero 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 and then the gateway was ten zero zero nine. Let's see. Mm. Show IP route. Cool. So we're learning a default route from BGP. Let's just see if I'm learning my network IP route print, which is dot twelve, I believe. Yeah, so I am learning dot twelve from the Cisco, so I'm just going to delete it. Uh, IP route delete no remove, and we're going to remove sixteen. Cool. Let's quickly see. Do I still have internet access? Yes. One nine two one six eight twelve one. All right, I'm happy with that. So, two microtics done. Cisco done. What is left? It's this uh, 40 gate we set up last time. I'm just concerned this 40 gate might have run out of its trial license, so we might have to add a new one. But if we do, no biggie. It's quite quick to do. Admin password. All right, cool. So show system int. And let's just check how am I doing the routing here. Show IP route print 10.0.0.14. Okay, so that's how we're going to configure the BGP as well. Let's just make sure everything's up. Execute ping 10.0.0.14 <coughs> and 13. All right, cool. So I'm happy with that. And do I have a LAN interface here? Yes, dot 13. All right, so let's configure this quickly. Config system, no, config router, BGP. Okay, this doesn't look right. Mm, I'm actually thinking it is because of the trial license. Uh, let's see if I can get onto this 40 gate quickly and I'm going to show you a little trick on Eve just to access it on the GUI as well. Since I am able, I should be able to break out, execute, ping, and let's look. Um, it should be 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. 
Hmm, okay, we're not we're not in for a good time here. Okay. So I'm actually just quickly going to scrap this uh, 40 gate that's here. It's not an issue. I'm 100% confident it is because of the trial license. Because these 40 gates only allow you to trial them for 14 days. And then you need to buy a license. That's just a limitation with the image. But for labbing it's fine. I mean it's not like you're going to always have the firewall for longer than 14 days. And it's not like you're using it in, in a production environment. All right, so let's just bring in a new node. Bring in the 40 gate. Make sure it is a 40 gate. Let's use 6.2.2. Uh, I'm going to leave those values default. Yeah, we can leave this all else default. All right, that's fine. Going to start up the 40 gate solo. And then I'm just going to connect cables again. So let's connect. Come here. Okay, this is probably because I'm zoomed out like that. So let's do this. There we go. Let's support one on the firewall going to Ether 3. That's fine. That will be our WAN. And let's just connect up Ether 2 as the LAN. So this can go into the switches. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to zoom out again because I don't need to see all that. All right. So let's jump back on the 40 gate. Fresh 40 gate. Ooh. No, man. It's going to throw me out now. Right, let's just do it again. Admin password or oh, admin blank password password. Okay, config system interface. Edit port one. Set mode static. Set IP ten zero i should have checked what that ip address was i actually did but i forgot now so let's just quickly log in here and check mm. admin oh i'm connected to the wrong mikrotik that's why that's why that's going to be an issue that'll be a big issue okay that should be fine IP address print. So let's just see Ether 5. That should be this. Okay, cool. 10 slash 30. Okay. And it should already have allowed access. Let's just see. Yes. Alright. Next. Edit port 2. Set IP. 192.168.14 Is it 14 or 13? Let's just check. IP route print. It is 13. But 1 slash 24. Set allow access ping. Okay. End. Alright, so we've configured our interfaces. So I should have access to 10 0, 0, 13. yes <coughs> so config router there we go you see all those options i didn't have before it's because of the trial all right so we need to first let's see set our as which will be 65 200 now we need to configure our neighbor we're going to edit and the neighbor will be 10 0, 0, um, 13 and then set remote AS and that will be 65,000 enter 
anything else I want here? No, we can next it. Anything else I want here? No, we can next this, end it. And then here I might want to just set my router ID, it's 10.0.0.14. <coughs> and then we can also configure our network. And we are going to make our network. So the prefix is 192.168.13.0 slash 24. Set prefix 192.168.13.0 slash 24. That should be it. Next, next, end, end. Okay. Might have looked confusing, um, but basically we did the same thing. We we set our AS number on the 40 gate. We also uh, set our neighbor's details and we added a router ID and we said which network we wanted to advertise out. So I don't want to confuse you with that, but that's what we did. Now let's get back on the peer or the, the provider edge. So routing, BGP peer add name peer to CE4. Alright, that should be good. Remote AS equals 65200 and the remote address 100014. And we want to default originate. Just remember on this 48, if I do um, get router info routing table all you'll see there's no default route configured configured there's, there's nothing learned yet so let's do that and there we go wow that was quick that was very quick so the BGP is connecting it's learning a default route now and if I ping out I should have internet breakout yes and we can do it from I'll execute ping option source 192.168.13.1 and there we go so all our LAN ranges have been configured let's just remove this last static route so IP route remove 17 awesome how cool is that our whole network is being done dynamically now so if we ever just need to add a new network to advertise we just go into the bgp at the ce add the new network and our provider edge will learn it uh, same thing for the provider edge if we add any new um, routing protocols maybe we just need to redistribute them so that is pretty cool i'm i'm, I'm hoping you took something away from that uh, with the bgp configuration not as difficult as it looked hey so we still have a bit of time and I'm going to quickly configure MPLS. <laughs> so I'm not going to do like VRFs or um, VPLS or anything just yet. We're just going to configure MPLS so that there's the label switching happening. Um, so this will just allow our back end to forward the packets a little bit quicker. Um, if you don't know what MPLS does, there's, there's articles, thousands of them on the internet. But in short, MPLS... Um, it allows your routing table to almost function as a switching table. I mean, it's, it's going to forward the packets as if they were frames. So people call it a layer 2.5 protocol. Um, I can see why, because it works in between IP and frame. Um, but essentially, it just has like this copy of where the frame should go to, like, like MAC addresses. But instead of MAC addresses, it's IPs. And then it will send those IPs out of the relevant ports. That, that's that's in essence what MPLS does, and it's a little bit quicker than the routing process because there's no, it, it's like using the ASIC of the switch. It's being smart, and so the switch does that switching very quick, and leveraging that um, technology really nice, really quick. So that's why MPLS has always been so strong. SD-WAN is coming. It's really good as well. I don't have anything against SD-WAN and it, it's, it does have its place definitely because the more bandwidth you have, SD-WAN is very good for that. But MPLS, I still think it's very useful. And for big corporates and enterprises, it's a must-have, especially if you're dealing with stuff like voice and you need specific 
quality control and that's where QoS comes in which is something we'll dive in as well but let's quickly configure MPLS it's not as difficult it's really not difficult actually it's very quick to do <coughs> on Mikritik um, since I don't have any Cisco's here I might add some later in another video just to configure there as well but I'll do it on the Mikritiks because that's my backbone so how do we configure MPLS well, very quickly we can go into MPLS um, so with the MPLS you also get something they call an LSR that we need to set and is no no man I'm thinking about OSPF now no it's um, LDP so with LDP that's the protocol that's being used to actually link distribution protocol or something that that's the protocol that's being used by the MPLS to form these connections and to do the, the business so to speak so we're going to configure the MPLS and we're actually just going to enable LDP so we're going to enable so MPLS LDP set enabled yes then we need to set a transport address which will be the loopback address of each router and this is why you need OSPF you or not just OSPF any IGP you can use any IGP but you need an IGP on the network to run MPLS if you don't have it it's not gonna work all right so and then we need yes man there's the LSR ID so the LSR ID it's going to be the same okay awesome <laughs> that's it um, but we also need to set our neighbors so that's also something else IP address print I just want to check what my neighbors are okay so I am going to do MPLS interface add no, MPLS LDP, LDP neighbor. There we go. MPLS LDP neighbor, add. And then the transport will be 1.1.1. And no, that's not right. we've got the LDP configured MPLS hmm, interface and do we do it from here apparently okay MPLS interface add let's add the interface and that will be my ether 2 and 3 ether 2 But all the interfaces should already be on there. Yes, it is. Okay, so this is not what I want. I'm pretty sure it is MPLS, LDP, and then neighbor. And add. <coughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll quickly check now. Because I feel like I am missing something with the neighbors, but we'll fix it. Let's just quickly configure this on the other Mikrotix. Let's just configure LDP at least. I mean, and that should be our first step. So MPLS LDP set enabled. Yes. Transport address 2.2.2 LSR ID 2.2.2. I'm just going to run through that quickly on the other Mikrotix because that's one line. It's one line to enable the LDP. MPLS. LDP set enabled ES transport 3.3.3 LSR ID 3.3.3 and then lastly my PE which is where I've been configuring all my routes on MPLS LDP set enabled yes LSR 4.4.4 transport 4.4.4 MPLS remote bindings print <coughs> Okay, so I'm not learning any bindings, but it is because I'm not specifying the neighbors, right? Routing MPLS LDP MPLS remote bindings print. <coughs> MPLS Ah. Uh, uh. <laughs> 
Okay, so we used neighbor. We need to use interface. There we go. This is what I want. So interface is ether 2. And the transport address will also just be what my transport address was. Let's do the same here. Sorry about the grind thing. I'm, it's just I feel really silly when I... Because you see how many places you can go into neighbor and interface. It's, it's pretty unreal. Okay, so that was Mikrotik 18, which is right. So let's go into Mikrotik 20. Okay. MPLS, LDP, neighbor, add. And then our neighbors are interface. No, I'm doing it again. Interface, add. And then our interface is ether. One and two, ether one, two dot two dot two, and ether two. Okay. Let's jump onto the other PE, PE three. So MPLS, LDP interface, add ether one, ether one, and our transport is three dot three dot three and ether2 and then last but not least our little provider edge where everybody connects so mpls ldp interface add and then our interfaces is two and no i just want to zoom in there sorry my eyesight is terrible and i'm sure you can't blame me so one and seven ether one and the transport address is 4.4.4 .4 and then ether seven which is quite a, a jump okay let's look at this let's say mpls remote bindings print Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. <laughs> look at those bindings all right cool so it is doing its job now it is learning the bindings or the addresses the routes giving them labels and showing which the what, what the hop is to get to those labels. So the MPLS is now configured. Remote bindings print. All right, I'm happy with that. So we've configured MPLS now as well. So that was a double whammy. We've done BGP and we've done MPLS on Mikrotik, but it's quite the same on other vendors. That's why I wanna just in the next video maybe bring in a Cisco and maybe another thing into this topology and just see if we can make the MPLS work between them. But yeah, that's, this is it. I'm going to end off the video here. I'd like to thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next Let's Lab This. See you.